Who's your commander? Good luck. Equipped. Move to combat. Resolves. Right. Now, before you attack Does me. anyone have an answer? Well played. Good game. Hello, this is DJ, and you're watching the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel. Today, we're doing a deck tech on Tristani, Selesnia's voice. Tristani, Selesnia's voice, is green, green, white, white for a legendary creature, Dryad. Tristani is a 2-5, and whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain life equal to that creature's toughness. Tristani also has an activated ability, one green, white, tap, to populate. The reason why I'm talking about Tristani is look at this beautiful new art. It's been released with the new guild kit and it is full of value. They have great reprints in that. And so if you pick it up to play a couple games, just know that you can break it apart and make an amazing commander deck out of it. Or you might just be drawn to this old school Ravnica legend and decide that it's time for you to build your own Tristani deck. But what does this deck look like? Well, in many cases, these are token decks. We look at populate and we think, okay, we don't just want to pay three mana to get another soldier. We want gigantic tokens to copy over and over again. But Tristani also has this life gain trigger on it as well. So many decks go heavy into life gain and play around with the life gain synergies. One problem I see with Tristani is its popularity. It is so popular, it's the number one commander for Selesnia. And so you don't need to watch this video if you're just building an ordinary old Tristani deck. It's been built over and over again. And so I want to present to you a different type of Tristani, a different type of token maybe. So if you're just interested in Selesnia, maybe you're interested in a few packages, maybe you have a Tristani deck and you're thinking this deck is getting boring, then this is the tech for you. Let's start off with the inspiration for this deck. And that is actually another Tristani. I looked at Tristani Discordant and I was super excited by it, except I don't know, it's a little bit boring. It's just an anthem. It just makes some dudes. Guilds of Ravnica give us amazing token synergies, Dawn of Hope, and this actually gives us life gain synergies too. Wow, that's a card for inspiration. Divine Visitation is so much fun to play. And then March the Multitudes goes over the top is just a really powerful effect. So what does the average Tristani deck look like? Well, edhrec.com can give us a view into what people are putting into their commander decks. And for Tristani, you've got cards like Advent of the Worm. Makes sense. Great value. You got four CMC for a 5-5 green worm creature token with Trample. And then when you can proliferate that worm over and over again, you get another mana off. That seems like it's a pretty powerful effect. Same thing with Growing Ranks. We're going to populate that worm token over and over again. And... Actually, each time we populate, Anointed Procession will double it up, and pretty soon, if we have everything going for us, we will have an army of 5-5 five, five worms. Sounds pretty fun. And that's why Tristani is so popular. It is fun. But I have a simple question for you in Commander. Do you want a 5-5 five, five worm, or would you rather have a Wood Elves? It's actually kind of an interesting question. Do you want to be beating down or do you want a card that can ramp you into the later game and give you more advantage? I personally would rather have Wood Elves and in non-token related decks and just green decks, people agree Wood Elves is more played. Ah, but you're saying this deck, you can get more worm tokens. You can populate it. You can make an army of worms. And I come to you and say, what happens if you actually ended up with an army of wood elves? Or even an army of armada worms? Ho ho ho! So let's talk about what this deck is going to be about. And the title of this category is a search. <laughs> the search is Oracle Text Token Copy. Let's take a look at the ways we can make tokens out of any card we want. Starting off, we have Helm of the Host, Bramble, Sovereign, and God Pharaoh's Gift. All of these will create tokens, and not just of 5-5 boring worms or soldiers or angels, but of Armada Worms, but of our great cards in Selesnia that have huge impact. 
Helm of the Host produces a new one every single turn. Bramble Sovereign doubles them up when you cast them. God Pharaoh's Gift gives us four four copies of them if they end up into our graveyard. I'll tell you what, I would 100% rather populate a 4-4 Wood Elf than populate a 5-5 Worm with Trample. And it keeps getting better from here. These cards will put permanent tokens onto the battlefield, but there are other ones that put them on temporarily, and then we have a chance to populate them or just get value from Enter the Battlefield effects. Mimic that, Seance, and Blade of Selves. So now instead of a deck that pays 4 mana for a 5-5 Trampler, we have a deck filled with Enter the Battlefield effects, value creatures that we love to play anyways, and then we make token copies of them, and then we get to populate those token copies and mess with the double synergy that we're adding to this deck. I want to mention a few more copiers that create tokens that I'm not going to include in this deck. One of them is Soul Foundry and the other one is Soul Separator. Soul Foundry, it's fine, but I feel it's a little bit slow because you always have to pay for that token. Yeah, that's fine and all, but you're always behind on mana. A lot of times with the Bramble Sovereign just paying two, or the God Pharaoh's Gift just pulling something out of your graveyard, or even the cost of equipping Blade of Selves or Helm of the Host. I feel like you're getting ahead on mana, but with Soul Foundry, you can never get ahead on mana, and sometimes... It just gets blown up before you have a chance to really take advantage of all the activations you really want to get out of it. And then Soul Separator. We really wanted this to be good. We were excited by it and tried to break it. And just the fact that it sacrifices itself, blah. Sorry, Soul Separator. One thing I did put in there is a one-off effect that's kind of expensive, Mirror Pool. I just think you could throw that in your deck and then make a token copy and then go off with that token copy. Yeah, that seems real fun. I do have to be sad about one thing. If we're making copies of amazing cards, then one thing we don't want to have happen is have them turn into 4-4 angels. I would rather get my token copy than get the angel, so Divine Visitation's replacement effect makes me sad now, and that's not what I want. Uh, the other thing that gets excluded is Tristani Discordant. We don't want to make copies of legendary creatures. So my inspiration for this deck is being left out, but that's okay, because we're going to make copies of awesome creatures, and then we're going to populate those copies, and I think we want to take a look at some traditional tokens. These are some cards that go in the normal Tristani deck, but are put to extremely good use in our deck. Let's take a look at Tristani Summoner, Hornet Queen, and Scion of Vitugazi. So these are all creatures with Enter the Battlefield effects, and they will produce awesome tokens. Wonderful. But if Tristani Summoner just happens to die and we put it under a Mimic Vat, then the value is insane. If we ever happen to put a Blade of Selves on a Hornet Queen, oh my gosh, and Scion of Vitugazi, it could come onto the battlefield over and over again and populate, or populate one of these other crazy tokens that we've created. The list goes on. We have Thragtus, gaining us life, being a big beater, and then also just leaving some beasts behind. And Wingmate Rock, if we can keep copying the rock, then we can keep putting 3-4 birds onto the battlefield. Next we have some removal with Angel of Sanctions. Blinking the angel in and out is fine, they get their permanent back, but if we ever embalm it and populate that token, Oh man, we're going to get so much value. That's just a fun card to keep having enter the battlefield. And Terastodon, sometimes we blow up our opponent's stuff, sometimes we blow up our own stuff, and then populate those 3-3 three, three beasts. It gives us tons of flexibility. And with all of these cards, we can add another element to this whole deck, and that's blinking things in and out. Eldrazi Displacer, Conjurer's Closet, a lot of blink effects in white can hit these amazing creatures and then rebuy all of their value. That doesn't work in a traditional token deck. But if we're blinking that Thrag Tusk in and out or that Tristani Summoner, then we're going to get a ton of value. Of course, this is kind of the traditional token section, and so I wanted to end it with some cards that are so good that they're definitely worth an inclusion. Phyrexian Processor is in almost every Tristani deck, and it 
deserves to be in there. You gain a bunch of life, and then when you pay the life into Phyrexian Processor, the first time you make a dude, you gain all of that life back with Tristani. And then you can activate it again, almost doubling up your life every single turn. And if you happen to populate them, then your life total just gets out of control. It's just so big and so powerful, you need to have it in this deck. And then I also like Sandworm Convergence. It's a very budget card that just keeps pumping worms out onto the battlefield and makes it so that your opponents can't attack you. I like dirtling sometimes, and this deck definitely has the potential to dirtle with all of the token value that we have. Speaking of all of that value, we have some elements of recursion in this deck. I already mentioned cards like Seance, Mimic Vat, and God Pharaoh's Gift. Those give us value when we have creatures going to the graveyard and we can reanimate them either through Seance or God Pharaoh's Gift as 4-4 or Eternalize. We trap them under the vat and then get value over and over again. So it does behoove us to get some of our great value creatures into the graveyard. And so one way to do that is with Birthing Pod. Birthing Pod can get Enter the Battlefield creatures out of our library, onto the battlefield, and then into our graveyard in a crazy cycle that is full of so much value. And Greater Good gets things into our graveyard and gets us some awesome card draw. And if we have some great creature trapped in our hand that we need to get into the graveyard, then Greater Good does an amazing job at it. And finally, we have some classic Enter the Battlefield recursion, Sun Titan coming out, rebuying our creatures if we don't have everything set up to eternalize them back or seance them back onto the battlefield, and Eternal Witness just getting it back into our hand. I know that this next card doesn't have an Enter the Battlefield effect, but Amiria Shepherd taking advantage of that landfall to create recursion engines. This means that getting things into our graveyard becomes even better, so that Birthing Pod and Greater Good and other things that can help us cycle through our deck is going to be really, really strong. I think this is where we're going to get a lot of our value, a lot of our card draw in this specific category, but we also got it on some creatures. Regal Force draws us at least one card! I like the ability to blink this in and out or get it to the graveyard, bring it back again. I think that just the value of drawing a couple cards off of this is well worth the inclusion. And then Huatli Radiant Champion. We could have a lot of creatures on the battlefield, and so pumping up a single creature could be really strong, but really what we're going for is this emblem. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. And the reason why Huatli is in here is because it's whenever a creature. It doesn't say non-token creature. So many things in green will limit us, and when we populate or put tokens on the battlefield, we won't get to draw cards. But with Watley, yeah, we're going to be drawing tons of cards. Can you imagine drawing a card off of every activation of Mimic Vat? Can you imagine playing Hornet Queen and drawing five cards? I actually can't. I can't imagine it. I need to do that, though. And finally, we have something that could be included, a Stoneforge Mystic Package. I was thinking about card draw and I was thinking about Skull Clamp and we don't have a lot of targets for it, but then I was thinking about Stoneforge Mystic and thought, wait a second, we have some awesome equipment that really goes in this deck well, Helm of the Host and Blade of Selves. They really synergize with our whole strategy. And we can get Stoneforge Mystic back, we can cheat mana cost putting it into play, it seems like it really belongs. And so I thought, throw in a Stoneforge package, and then while we're at it, throw in a Nazan Revered Bladesmith package. Then suddenly we have two sort of equipment search effects that you can blink, that you can recur, and then throw in that Hammer of Nazan to give our Tristani a little bit more protection and let us keep populating over and over again. I am so excited to not just populate angels or worms or soldiers, I am so excited to populate sun titans, to populate regal forces. All of your favorite cards can come onto the battlefield in multiples in commander, and the whole time we're stabilizing the board, gaining tons and tons of life, and then beating our opponents to a pulp. One thing I really like about this specific deck tech is you don't have to build my exact version. Go out and do what you want, but maybe you're thinking, huh, I'm going to put a God Pharaoh's Gift in my deck. That seems like it's really cool. Or I'm going to include a Mimic Vat or a Bramble Sovereign. You know what? I hadn't updated my deck since Battle Bond. And all of these could give you a little bit more depth to your Tristani deck or give you a little bit of inspiration so that you can build something that fits you really well.
If you want to buy any of these cards, heck, if you want to buy a guild kit for the cheapest you can on the internet, check out tcgplayer.com. They're a marketplace, so you're buying from individuals and local game stores all over the country, and they're competing with each other to make sure that you get great value. So check out tcgplayer.com. There'll be a link in the description. I also want to thank my patrons because, well, they support me. They support me so much. Thank you, patrons. You are all amazing. And thank you for watching this video. There is a ton of good stuff coming up. I'm so excited. Just stay tuned. Bye-bye.